Welcome to this video on the dentistry interview, focusing on the second GDC principle of communicating effectively. I'm Alice from Dentist Mind, where we go through the important topics of the dentistry interviews. Whichever university you're applying for, MMI or panel, we've got you covered. If you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button. Whilst you're watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything. We've got helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you. The following video is a free sample of our full interview course, which you can buy by clicking on the link below in the description. So let's get started. Welcome to lesson five on dentistry ethics. This time we're looking at communicating effectively, the second GDC principle. So the second principle is broken down into several subcategories. The first of these is about communicating effectively with the patient, so giving them time to understand the information you're giving them and also adhering to individual needs and views of the patient. For example, some patients may take a bit longer to understand the information, so you have to take your time to explain it to them. And you might also need a translator, for example, if the patient doesn't speak the same language as you. The second point it's broken into is about promoting and understanding the patient's rights. So this could be linked back to the four medical pillars and the principle of autonomy, whereby it is totally up to a patient to accept or refuse dental treatment as long as they are competent enough to make this decision. The third point it's broken down into is giving patients all of the information that they need in a way that they can understand it as well. So some patients may prefer to have written information that they can take home and read in their own time to make sure they fully understand it. You also can't withhold any information from a patient. So you must give them all of the possible outcomes of a treatment, for example, not just the expected outcomes, the things that could go wrong as well. And the other point that this is broken down into is being clear and giving patients all of the information regarding the cost of their treatment. So you can't hide anything from a patient in terms of what it might cost or, for example, if they need retreatment because something goes slightly wrong, you need to explain the cost implications of this as well. So there's no point in saying to a patient, this is the baseline cost, it's not going to cost any more than this, this is what you can expect. You have to be honest with the patient and say, okay, if something goes wrong, we may have to do this, which will cost this much. And therefore the patient is fully informed and has all of the information they need before consenting to a specific treatment. So on this slide, we have a practice MMI station. Um, in your interview, you might be given a minute to read through this and then five minutes to talk about it. So if you want to pause the video now for a minute and give yourself some time to read the, the scenario. Uh, this scenario is talking about a patient called John and it's giving you a bit of background information about him. So if this came up in an interview, it may be a scenario where you get given this information and then have to talk to an actor who is playing the role of John. And therefore, the interviewer is going to be seeing how you communicate effectively with the patient, which shows GDC principle number two. So on this slide, we have some ideas of what would be good things to include in your answer and bad things to include if you did get a scenario like this in one of your interviews. So the things that might be good to do, number one, don't jump in. You don't want to go straight in there. You need to take a step back and ask some more questions of the patient. Also remain calm throughout. You need to be level-headed um, and acting professionally throughout the scenario if you're having a conversation with a patient. Also show empathy to the patient. So show that you understand that they're upset that they can't have this treatment. Um, and obviously understanding the fact that they might get angry as well. So be prepared to deal with this if the actor playing the role of John does get a bit upset or angry in the situation. Using simple language is important. So you don't want to use complicated terminology that someone's not going to understand. Communicating effectively involves talking in a way that the patient can understand it. You need to listen actively. So this isn't just knowing that you're paying attention and taking in the information that's being told to you. It's things like nodding or smiling along with what the patient is saying. Also reacting well. So if the patient's really upset, you don't want to just sit there and ignore them and not show any reaction to what they're saying. So it's important to react well to what they say to you in this scenario. And finding out all the information is important. So ask more questions and therefore you can build your answer better if you have a lot more information to build it on. Things that you might want to avoid if you get a scenario like this would be being overly emotional. You are acting as a professional in this role 
and therefore you need to keep level-headed and calm in the situation. Also, don't lack empathy because it, you need to show you understand your patient is upset um, and it helps a patient to feel more comfortable if you show empathy in the scenario as well. Also, not covering the information required would be a bad thing to do in this situation because you need to make sure you cover all areas of the topic and therefore the interviewer can see that you're trying to get all the information you need before making a decision. Also not coming up with a solution is something to avoid because you need to make sure that you could show that you understand the patient can't have treatment and you're explaining this to them as opposed to maybe sugarcoating it and pretending oh maybe they can have treatment at some point but you've got to give them an answer they can't have this treatment and it's how you deal with communicating this answer to the patient that the interviewer is looking for and like I mentioned just there don't give them false hope don't sugarcoat it and pretend they might have the treatment at some point you have to be honest with the patient that they don't qualify for the NHS treatment and therefore you need to explain this to them and communicate this information to them which is what the interviewer is going to be looking for so that was lesson five, which is now complete. This should have given you a bit more information about how to respond to a question in your interview if you get asked one about how to communicate with a patient or if you get given a scenario to act with another person about something like this that might come up in general dental practice. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe by clicking below and please leave a comment. Click here to continue watching our interview series and to unlock full access to 70 tutorials covering core interview topics, MMI mocks, top tips and more, click on the link in the description below.